In our first video, we established that this motherboard works. And this is our motherboard with the AMD E1200 APU, two core, two thread. We also put eight gigs of RAM on the motherboard. Now, we're going to put this motherboard, which I'm gonna use as what I hope to be a low power, but still adequate emulation board in this chassis. This chassis we've seen before in another shorts video that I did. I managed to get this for $2 at a garage sale locally. And it's an HP, it's a desktop, and it's got a socket 939 board on it. It's fairly power hungry. Comes with a decent power supply. Nice heat sink. It does have the passive heat sink with the airflow over it. Uh, it comes with, I believe, a half gig of RAM. What I want to do is make this into sort of a stealth system. To do this, we're going to replace the power supply with the supply that originally came with this motherboard, which we went back to the salvage yard and rescued. And it's a fairly low power, 80 plus bronze light on system, uh, power supply from the original computer. We're going to use that. I also did get the back plate. I don't know if that's going to work in here. I have my doubts because this board is pretty much backwards from this board. So we can see we've got our PCIe lane here, our PCI lane there, and it's pretty much completely backward. So I won't be using any external video cards on this board in this chassis, but I shouldn't because this does have an onboard Radeon APU. We're going to keep the same CD-ROM DVD drive, take out the desktop size hard drive, and then use a laptop size drive. I'm not going to waste an SSD on this one because once it boots, it's not going to do much more than run an emulator. We're going to use that. I also, for the sake of using the power switch and the lights on the front of the chassis, I did take the switches and the lights off of the original computer, which for the APU, the uh, AMD APU, this motherboard did come out of a system. It was fairly crushed. It was a gateway. So what I plan to do is swap out the pins on the onboard HP with the pin out on the actual motherboard and just match up the connectors and the wires. So hopefully that works out for us. That shouldn't be too bad. It's not any surgery. Don't need any soldering on that, I hope. And then I just hope everything manages to go together. So this video will be about stripping out the chassis, cleaning everything up, hopefully getting everything inserted so it works and it's stable somehow, and um, getting our stealth system up, seeing how nice we can make this all look, putting a little spit and polish on the old chassis, having a little fun with it. So stand by for the fun.
Friends, this is where things began to go south. The case is cleaned and stripped out. Now I'm going to try and figure out how to place this motherboard in this BTX case with the existing standoffs and screw points. I want at least one screw to hold it in place. I figured I could use double-sided tape if I needed to on the underside of the motherboard, you know, for some additional adherence. It's not quite working as we can see here. And I'm trying to figure out I need to get some support under the board or it's going to flex and as you can see the back of the board the ports it's a long ways from the back of that case well I thought I'll go ahead and throw some tape as an insulator on these on these existing standoffs inside the case and then see which which one screw hole that I can use again to secure as much of the motherboard as I can We'll get this taped off. And then we'll throw the motherboard back in and try and make it fit. Cleaning up the case itself wasn't too bad. I mean, I found several new species of spiders and other insect parts. Um, but taking it out to the garage and using the air compressor, there was no point in filming that. Um, worked very well. And then just a gobsmack of paper towels and isopropyl alcohol just to get things clean and tidied up. All right, let's get a screw, put it in the standoff and try to make it fit. But first off, if I use the motherboard, well, not the motherboard, but the case standoffs, I should put some plastic standoffs, old school AT case style standoffs on the bottom of this motherboard so it it is supported in the area that I was pushing down on earlier. Try and find a screw that will fit. I think I have one here. And then let's get those plastic standoffs on the motherboard. This is another reason to keep all your old hardware. Have a jeweler case or a hobbyist case and have all your old hardware available. All right, so we have some plastic standoffs that I'm hoping will support the motherboard if we just use one screw to put the motherboard in the chassis. Now that doesn't seem too bad. It's not wiggling too much. And we'll get a screw in there and we figured, well, later on we could put some, some double-sided tape so the, the motherboard itself doesn't slide around. And again, the plan was not to use any external video card. Um, the onboard Radeon graphics with that Fusion chipset should be more than sufficient. All right. So if we leave the motherboard here, well enough but then we have to deal with the elephant in the room which even if we ran the cables through the back of the case into the motherboard sealed it all up or if I got extension cables that's fine it's a sleeper system but the elephant in the room turned out to be something that I thought would work better and that's the power supply I am looking at this in a very puzzled manner. All right, how am I going to get this power supply to work? And this is the power supply from the original gateway system that I rescued at the scrapyard. As it turns out, I'm realizing right now, yeah, it doesn't matter how I secure it to this case, that 24 pin AT supply is not going to reach that motherboard, which is way over on the far corner. Even the power supply that came with this chassis wouldn't work. And I'm not here to buy an extension to that AT supply. Um, and the way the motherboard's sitting, this just isn't going to work. 
couple more minutes of me puzzling this out, and I come to the conclusion that we are not going to use this chassis. And as much as I hate to, after all, it is a BTX chassis, so I feel a little bit better about just chucking it back on the scrapyard pile. And part three of this video series, we're going to put it in a real case and try and get the sleeper system working. Part three, folks.